Tampa Rep is one of Tampa Bay's most beloved theater companies, presenting a mix of classics and contemporary plays all year round. Up next is King Lear. Today we have Roxanne Fay and Cranston Cumberbatch, both actors in this exciting production, here to talk all about it. It's great to see both of you. Yeah, hi, it's man. Here. It's wonderful. We're all we've all worked together before, so this will be pretty easy. This is just like a fun conversation. Now, I love the idea of King Lear. Um, and I know that his, it has not been done in this area in Tampa Bay for like, uh, so maybe 30 years is what I read in some of the press for the show. Um, I know when people look at it, they may see Shakespeare and tragedy and they may go, oh, do I want to see Shakespeare? Do I want to see a tragedy? But I think of this show as a thriller. It, it, King Lear kind of reminds me of Secession on HBO in so many ways. Um, Roxanne, why do you think this play resonates now? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right, Matthew. Um we have a tendency to to put Shakespeare on this very strange pedestal, but we have to remember that he was writing the the entertainment of the day. So King Lear is is like an epic, you know, Star Wars battle of good and evil and all these different sides. And he was really trying to make things, you know, interesting and exciting for his audiences. So there's a lot going on. It's very action packed. There's lots of um, double twists in the plots and. Uh, it's it's exciting to watch, so I'm I'm glad we're getting a chance to do it. Yeah, I really am excited. It's being produced as well. Uh, why don't you both tell us a little bit about your role, starting with Cranston. Tell us about who you play in the show. Um, I play the character Edmund. Um, he is the son of Gloucester, yes. and he uh, <laughs> and he, you know, he reaches a point where he kind of realizes his stake uh, in all of this kingness that's happening. Um, and as he realizes his place, he, you know, makes a decision that uh, changes the course of the play. That's true. It's true. And Roxanne, you play the fool, which is a great role played by so many actors. And I just would love to hear more from you about the fool. Well, it's interesting. Um, in the past when I've played fools uh, or clowns, um, they're sort of um, overtly, you know, very funny. Um, and there's a difference between the fool and the clown in Shakespeare. The, the, the clown is like touchstone. He's very funny. He's very, you know, it, it's a very comedic role. But the fools always have a, a, a wisdom about them or a, a bluntness. And a king's fool was his personal companion and his personal sort of sidekick uh, entertainer that was given this free license to speak his mind. And in King Lear, he really serves as Lear's conscience and uh, his his kind of whetstone, his touchstone to reality as he starts to slip away from it. Um, and it's it's a really challenging role, but this one is great for me because I'm really getting a chance to really be very physical with the role. And uh, yeah. that's something that I haven't had a chance to do a lot, and I'm enjoying it. I love it. I, I can't wait. Now, sword fights, poisonings, murders, it's like Game of Thrones in a way, too. <laughs> what is, you know, if for those people maybe tuning in, they've never heard of King Lear, what's the fastest way you can sort of sum up the plot? Well, it's about a man who um, who wants to live an, a life of ease, and he wants to uh, be taken care of in his, in his, old, his older age. Uh, but he trusts the wrong people, mm -hmm. and he his uh, his pride allows him to be flattered by the wrong the wrong people rather than to really take heed of the people who care about him. Oh, it's wonderful! You know, it's a classic play. I think people are going to love it. King Lear is now playing through February twentieth. You can get your tickets right now at tamparep.org. It's at the USF Tampa campus, and um, I can't wait to see it. I, I'm looking forward to it. it. I don't. You don't see this play very much, so I'm thrilled to see the both of you in King Lear at Tampa Rep. Yeah, yeah come see Cranston fight. He's awesome. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Well, of course, February is a Heart Health Awareness Month, and today on our Medical Monday segment, we want to talk about those cardiovascular catastrophes. You know, you think of heart attack, you think of stroke, but you don't necessarily think of heart failure, and it affects more than 6 million people, and 10% have advanced heart failure. So to talk a little bit about this today, Dr. Oliver Abella is joining us, who is a board certified cardiologist with Advent Health 
to talk about life-saving treatments and to educate us even more. Dr. Abella, good morning. How are you today? Good morning, Natalie. Thanks so much for having me. You know, I'm glad we're talking about this. You know, February is the perfect time to kind of reevaluate it. And I'm guilty of this too. When I think of heart health, my mind goes to, you know, the catastrophes, as I just said, heart attack or stroke, but really heart failure. I didn't realize it was that the numbers were that high. Absolutely. And you're not the only one that, because it, it's something that comes along after a lot of other heart conditions. Um, if you have a bad heart valve problem, if you have a bad heart attack, if you have bad heart arrhythmias, eventually those things lead to heart failure itself. And bad heart failure is actually carries a worse prognosis than many um, advanced cancers. So it is a big deal. So this may sound like a very simple question, but then what is heart failure? Sure. Um, and the answer to that is also simple, but it's simple answer, but it's a complicated thing to deal with. But essentially, it's the heart not being able to provide the proper blood flow to the rest of the body. And we start to see that uh, affect the major organs like the kidneys and the liver. And the individual will notice it as not being able to do normal activities without getting significant shortness of breath. Um, that's something that is the first sign of it. Um, but uh, at times it's difficult for, for that person to present to the hospital or to a physician to be evaluated for that. Well, let's talk about some prevention. I mean, what do you see in your office? Does this affect you know, both men or women equally? I mean, especially with this month talking about heart health, you know, what are some things that we can maybe do? Sure, so heart failure affects both men and women very frequently. Oh. And uh, you know, we've all been to the physicians and someone will say, hey, your blood pressure is running a little high, maybe we should be on top of that. And the reason why all physicians are trained to make such a big a deal of those things is because eventually many of uh, patients with uncontrolled blood pressure develop heart 